what's up guys it's amanda and you're watching i always want to say you're watching my youtube channel and then like i think of the little disney thing no that's what's up guys it's amanda and welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you all are having a wonderful day so far and it's as you can tell by the title of the video because you're intelligent and wonderful people today's video is going to be an art haul and i'm going to be opening up this beastly box behind me um i didn't bother crossing out the address because the address on here is actually my po box and it is not affiliated with like my physical location so it's fine it's safe but also don't send me things there because i'm going to be closing that po box in a couple of months anyway so bypassing that now let's open this box so i placed an order with dickbook.com i will leave around like march 15th i'm not sure when this video is going to be going up on my channel it's probably going to be way after but they were having a free shipping promotion which is why i purchased this when i did i like dickblick.com because they don't delete your shopping cart after like a set amount of time so i always just continually add things to my cart like when i think of a copic marker refill that i need i'll just go on dickblick.com and add it to my cart so i'd had a lot of items accumulating in my cart and when they had the free shipping promotion i was just like hey might as well get all of those things that i've been wishing for so that's what this box is as we know they love to send little air pillows uh to protect all of my wonderful art supplies which i appreciate very very much okay so here is like my invoice not really important so i got a lot of copic marker refills and i'm going to be going over all of those momentarily but let's just start with these items on top so there's two items in here that are paper the first of which is a pad of the b paper company artist marker paper and this is recommended for use with i believe it's like twin touch markers actually it may not even say that anymore because those markers might have been discontinued but this is great for any alcohol based marker it's a really smooth paper it's thinner than like bristol or vellum um, or at least the bristol and vellum that i've worked with and it's got a really smooth finish it's really really nice for blending and this is eight and a half by 11 inches which is a nice standard size so i did want to get some more of this because i do really like it and it's hard to find um like in stores so that's why i got that then i got this canson mixed media sketchbook and this is a 9 by 12 you guys i'm getting ambitious um <laughs> this is a very large size sketchbook for me but i want to try it out and i really really love the canson mixed media sketchbook that i'm currently working in so that is why i kind of jumped the gun and decided to get this because it is a larger size obviously um and maybe i can focus on doing more full illustrations in this sketchbook and have these be like my friday video content because this is the size that i kind of like to work with for my full illustrations but it's not the size that i generally like to work with for my sketchbooks so i might play around with that but i did pick up another one of those because i do like it a lot let's see oh i got these because these i'm really really excited about these are some Windsor and Newton inks and I am just really excited. I've never had like loose inks like this aside from the India ink that I have, which what brand is this? Uh, Dr. PH Martins. It's a nice India ink um, and it's black, which is nice to refill like my pencil pocket brush. And I like that it has the dropper, but I thought for use with um, like my actual marker illustrations that these kind of loose um inks would be really nice so i got a white one and this is marketed as calligraphy ink for fountain and dip pens but i thought i could use this like to splatter white onto my drawings i wonder hopefully this doesn't get messy um it looks very very liquidy like it's well i guess it's ink so most ink is like very liquidy i don't know it sounds even thinner than the dr ph martin one so hopefully it's very opaque and hopefully i like that a lot then I did get a black one, and what I liked about this black one is that it says it's supposed to be a matte, which that black one definitely is not. It's got kind of a sheen to it. So I kind of want to try this out too because I think 
the matte finish will be something that I really, really like. And then lastly, I got a gold one because I wanted a gold ink for a really long time and I just haven't really been able to find a loose one or a pan that um, is a reasonable price and that is like available at a local art store near me. So I got this, look how pretty it is. It's a more of a like yellowy orange gold than I thought it would be. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more of a pale gold, um, but I'll have to kind of see what it looks like on paper. Oh my gosh, that is so cool to look at. It literally looks like molten metal. It looks so pretty, where's the, there you go. Um, so I'll have to play around with these and experiment with them, see how I like them with my illustrations, but I'm definitely excited to have them on hand for when I want to add some cool effects to my artwork. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the star of the show. Oh, there's still some that fell. Oh, there's a hole in the bag. That's what it's filling out. Um, a lot of my markers were kind of running on empty and they're colors that I actually realized that I'm using more and more. So I had to pick up some refills. It is what it is, guys. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of go through these and just kind of tell you the colors. And if it's a color that I really, really like, I'll mention that. If it's a color that I'm kind of like just starting to experiment with, I'll mention that, things of that nature. So the first color in here is N1 Neutral Gray. In my opinion, the neutral grays were something that I never really messed with for the longest time, but I am kind of starting to warm up to the neutral and tonal gray family. Just because when I'm working with just warm grays and just cool grays, I feel like there's there's kind of a void and I need kind of an in-between. And I really discovered that when I was working on the Miss Venomous Cupcake collaboration where I did that whole piece like all in grayscale except for that pop of red. And I was just realizing that I really needed to bridge the gap between the warm and cool grays and I ended up layering my warm and cool grays, which totally works, but I do have a lot of neutral and tonal markers. So I figured why not use those, get refills for them and kind of play around with them a little bit more. I haven't been using a lot of grays in my recent work, but they're just such a staple to have. So I did get a lot of grays. I got N7, another wonderful neutral. N6, I think I have most of the neutral grays. I have quite a few, so um, I did pick those up. I also picked up the Colorless Blender Refill in this form because it's so much easier to actually refill the marker when you have this version of it than the, like compared to the huge bottle because the nozzle on this isn't really designed to like dip and pour and fill your marker like these are. So it gets a little bit messier with this one. Plus I do like to use this a lot like as kind of a loose liquid with a brush. I'm extra and I like to have both. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, um, I guess if I had to go back, I would probably just like buy multiples of these and have one to use loose and then one to refill the marker. But I actually think this one is a better value. So take that as you will. It might be a better value to have the one to refill your marker and then the one to use loose or to have this and then have like an artist syringe. I don't know. Do what you will, but that is my predicament and I just thought I would explain that a little bit. <laughs> Um, the next color is BV31. I've been loving this as an alternative to using BV00 because it's slightly less purple. So it still creates like a nice natural shadow that's not too gray, but it's also a little bit easier to blend out. So I've been liking that one a lot. Again, that's BV31 Pale Lavender. R22. I am so glad I have a refill of this now because my marker was bone dry and I luckily had like an extra marker of R22, but that one was also starting to dry out and I've been using this color a lot lately for some reason. So I'm just, I'm glad I have a refill. I can now rest easy. Um, next I got Y13 Lemon Yellow. This is a beautiful yellow and I've kind of been using yellows more in my artwork and Especially yellows when I create gradients. I find that this is one I reach for a lot and when you know when you create gradients You need a marker that's got a lot of ink in it so that it's easy to blend into the other colors So that's why I got a refill for it Next I have E39. I'm surprised I didn't already have a refill of this because I use this a lot. It's a beautiful brown um, The color is called leather and it's great for hair colors. It's great for skin tones. It's great for background so it's a really versatile brown and i'm glad i have a refill of that one too i also have e37 the e30 color family is one that i tend to lean towards a lot because i have like all of the colors in that color family i have 
or most of them. I don't think I have all of them, but I have E31, E33, E35, E37, E39. So I like to have refills for all those colors because I use them together a lot of the time. So one runs out. You don't have the whole family. You don't have them all, you know, working at the same capacity, which is important. The next color is E04. This is a marker that I've had in my collection forever, and I use it all the time, but I use it so sparingly in every single piece, which meant I didn't really run out of it very easily, and when I did use it, it was for things that didn't really require a lot of ink. So I would use it to color in lips, which were a very small surface area, didn't require a lot of blending, so the marker never really ran dry. But it was recently um, brought to my attention that this is a really good color for um, darker skin tones to add blush and to add sort of like a dynamic shading um, effect as well. It's kind of similar to the E70 color family. They kind of have similar undertones. This one is a little bit warmer. The color is Lipstick Natural, which is why I always use it to color lips. The name doesn't, shouldn't limit you to what you use it for but I always used it to color lips and I never really thought about using it as a shadow color or a skin tone color until I saw JMI Creations and Lethal Chris here on YouTube use it in that way. So I started using it in that way and then I needed a refill for it because I was coloring larger areas. Long story, you don't care. The next color is B24 Sky and the B color family is a color family that I need to refill a lot because I use them for larger areas. I use them to color backgrounds like skies or bodies of water or galaxies or it's just, it's kind of an essential color family and especially the mid-tone to darker blues, I find myself um, refilling a lot, especially with the darker colors. Darker Copic marker ink, I think, tends to be a little bit thicker in consistency and it kind of crystallizes easier in the markers too. So I just find that I need to refill them a little bit more often. I don't know, do you guys have that problem? Like, maybe it's just me, I don't know. I got C10, <laughs> it's just a very dark charcoal gray. It's really nice to use as an alternative to black if you're trying to avoid using like very harsh whites and blacks in your piece, then that's a great alternative to black. Any of the dark grays are a great alternative to black, kind of just depends on the direction you're going. But um, when I do use my C10 marker, I haven't had a refill for it and I have noticed it getting a little bit dry, so I decided to pick that up. V17, thank God I have this refill. My marker was bone dry. It was another instance like with R22 where my backup marker was also getting dry and I was using this to color my Spider Gwen piece and I was like, I don't know if we're gonna make it. I don't know what's gonna happen because my V17 marker is on its last legs and I was really scared. And then every time I needed to use it like after the fact, I was like, I have to find another color. I have to find another way because my V17 marker is dead. RIP V17 amethyst. Thank goodness I have a refill for it. I'm not even being dramatic guys. It's just that important when you don't have a marker refill and you really need it. I even just spit a little bit because I was that passionate. The next color is neutral gray three. Again, just kind of stocking up on my neutral refills. W-O-O, -O, or as I like to call it, woo! <laughs> this is a very pale warm gray. I use this a lot as an alternative to using the color of Splendor because um, it just looks a little bit softer and I just find that like sometimes they blend a little bit easier, especially depending on what you're blending. Like if you're blending the warm gray color family, obviously the warm gray marker blends a little bit easier than the colorless blender, or maybe that's just a placebo effect, I don't know. But I got a refill for that one because, especially with the very light, light pale colors, I use them a lot to kind of blend out the surrounding colors. So I need them to have a lot of ink so that they're able to blend things evenly. Same thing with N0, or as I like to call it, no! <laughs> like how do you, how do you not just, how how do you maybe i'm just a child i don't know but again it was kind of the same story with this one i just like to have those pale grays and pale desaturated colors to blend out other colors i have boo 
or as I like to call it, boo. Are we gonna get tired of that joke in this video? Because there's a couple Copic Markish colors. And I didn't intentionally all pull them out back to back. That's really funny. Um, so yeah, B-O-O, -O, frost blue. I love to use this for bodies of water. I love to use it for skies, things like that. I just like to have um, refills for all my blue markers because I do use them a lot and I do have a lot of blues that I use regularly. That's one of them. I think that was all of the ones that have the little like O's at the end. So they look like words. Um, now we have N5 neutral gray 5. You guys know the story with that. I'm going to save a little bit of time by not telling you the same story over and over for every single marker. T4, the T gray color family is actually really beautiful. I'm starting to fall in love with it and I do need more tonal gray markers because I only have a few. I have more neutral colors than I do tonal colors. But I do like that gray. It's very pretty. Now I have E50 and I already have a refill of E50, but I use it a lot. I would get it for you, but it's like way up there and I'm way down here. So we're not going to do that. Um, but the E50 color is one that I use a lot to color skin tones, um, to color blonde hair. I use this a lot. So it was one of those refills that was like kind of starting to get down to the bottom and I just didn't want to deal with running out of the refill and running out of like ink in the marker because that's just a bad time. So I got an extra refill of that one and that's actually my first duplicate refill that I've ever purchased. There might be, yeah, there's a couple more in here um, that I have purchased that I just, I need on hand <laughs> at all times. Like W1, I use W1 all the time. So my refill for that one was getting a little bit low. We're almost done guys, we have four more. <laughs> um, next we have Y11 and I thought I had a refill. Oh, I don't. I don't have a refill of Y11. I have a um, refill of Y00, which is kind of similar. This obviously has a little bit more pigment and it shows up a little bit better. Um, but I do use those a lot for blending gradients, like I said. So having refills of like Y11 and Y13 is really going to come in handy. Especially because like you guys know I've been doing like the Volana piece that I did not too long ago. Um, I did a lot of gradients and a lot of blending in that piece and so it's very crucial that your markers have enough ink in them to be able to blend and create those kinds of effects. So that's why I got that one. Um, next I have B26, kind of the same thing with B24. I use this a lot. It's a beautiful dark blue and I hate when my dark blues run out of ink. Then we have B02, which is a beautiful color, and I love it a lot. And again, I was using that one a lot to color my Spider Gwen piece a couple months ago, and I just realized that it was running out of ink, so I needed to pick up a refill for it. Then we have E57. This is the final refill that I picked up. I got a lot of them. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't realize there was this many refills. Um, but again, this is a great color for coloring brunette hair, for coloring backgrounds, for coloring skin tones, whatever it may be. The earth tones and the gray color family are some of the most versatile and they're some of the ones that I recommend you invest most in first because the colors you can find subsequent colors, subsequent brands, um, but I feel like your grays and your earth tones are the colors you run out of the most. So it's really nice to have the option to buy a refill for it. So that's what I recommend. And now the lighting is getting really weird in here. So we're gonna end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys very much and I will see you Friday with my Artsy Fartsy Friday video for the week.